Hi, this is Mariah Gillow from The Hollywood Reporter, and I'm in studio today with Antonio Banderas. Hi, how are you? Very well, very well. We're here to talk about Picasso. Uh -huh. Take us through how you became Picasso, because I know that you have been asked to play Picasso several times in the past. Correct. Why was this now the right time? I uh, suppose that I needed more experience. Mm -hmm. I needed also to get rid of the certain fears that I had, you know, to play a character that was born in my man that was born in my hometown. Right. And I there was a sense of responsibility attached of the possibility of playing him. Um, also with a very difficult personality, uh, very secretive and mysterious in a way because mm -hmm. he didn't have a, though he was very famous and uh, you know, he never did so many interviews and he never justified himself or anything. He didn't explain what, what his art was about uh, or his life. Mm. And uh, so it was not until uh, Ron Howard, uh, Ken Biller, Brian Grazer called me. I was in London, we had an appointment there. And I saw there was National Geographic behind uh, the whole entire project with, you know, an institution with credibility and prestigious, um, you know, and prestige. And at the same time, they did the, the series on um, Albert Einstein. And I, I saw it before they even called me. I didn't mm. even know that they were going to just uh, do Picasso. And, uh, so I thought, okay, it's now or never. Yeah. And I jumped into it, into the leap. Yeah. yeah. The character of Picasso, like you said, is very, very secretive. Um, very mysterious, yeah. but it was easy for you to get the accent because you're from his hometown. Yeah, that was his, his part. What was some of the harder things about, to get about him? Uh, to really understand, you know, why he established um, very uh, strong relationships with uh, women on one mm -hmm. side, friends, uh, family, with everybody actually that surrounded him. The, the, the most difficult part for me was just to... Uh, to try to understand the dark side of the character, right? Uh, which he has definitely, and and because I was born with the idea of Picasso as a, as a hero, you had to think that Picasso. Um, I, I started knowing and I started hearing about Picasso when I was still a little kid, uh, and and at a time that Spain was under a dictatorship with mm -hmm. Franco, General Franco in power, and uh, there were not too many heroes out there. And so he became a natural hero because he was from Malaga and he was just doing a huge actual around the world, talking about the sisters. And um, so, uh, you know, for me just to confront the fact that actually um, he was a human being was mm -hmm. not that, that um, you know, easy. <laughs> yeah. Even when I was playing him. So I, I have to just put all the morality uh, judgments that I may have over the character aside in order to try to understand know why he did and he said the, the, the things that he did and he said at the, the, mm -hmm. this time. So that was the, the most difficult part, trying to understand him. Because we know the things that he said and we know the things that we did. We, we, we don't know his why. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there seems to be a uh, an inner turmoil between how yeah. he was treated and his personal relationships, how he treated others. Yeah. His political relationship, and then his, also his relationship to his art, which was so important to him, oh, yeah. and nobody seemed to understand it the way that he needed them to understand. No, the, the, his art was the, the only thing really, really, really important. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, his art, is, it was him. So he yeah. was a very self-centered character, very autistic, mm -hmm. but like all geniuses in a way. You know, I have, I think, I have the um, luck of meeting some. Geniuses, and movie mm -hmm. directors, and painters, and writers, and and the, the, one of the features that actually is common to all these characters is that is that they are very self-centered. They need a lot of space. They mm -hmm. occupy a lot of space. And if you want to be in a room with them, you have to actually um, uh, give them what they need, and you have to become, uh, you know, a little bit smaller in order mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, accomplish a relationship that is normal. If you try to conquer their space, there are going to be contradictions there, and there's going to be some fight. Well, that's, that's Picasso's life. Uh, yeah. his, his life with women, his life with, uh, with the family, with his sons and daughters, and, you know, uh, th there was always a conflict there, you know, that it was very, very difficult for people who came to his life to understand. He was, uh, I said it many times during all this time of promotion and stuff, you know, he was a, a guy who got a tremendous gravity, and a lot of people got caught in that gravity, in that orbit, and it was very difficult for them just to leave. 
Um, so, yeah, he left behind some collateral mm -hmm. damages. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the wonderful things about the series is because it's a 10-part series, yeah. not only do you get to see his relationships with the many, many women in his life, but you get to see them, too, fleshed out. Um, it, was that important to you when you did this series, that there would be an equal opportunity for the women in Absolutely. his life to get, get a role Absolutely. in the dramatic storytelling? Absolutely. In, the, in all of, of the cases, very specifically, mostly probably with Francoise Gilo. Well, what Francoise? Because Francoise was a woman that, um, he's still alive, is a woman, that uh, uh, confronted him, you know. Um, she was an intellectual, and she also needed her, her space. Mm -hmm. And so the confrontation was practically from the beginning, you know. I mean, I think these people, they got to love each other very much. They had two kids together, and they lived for 20, 10 years mm -hmm. uh, together. Uh, but they were uh, confronting each other all the time. It was kind of a competition there. And she wrote a book that was quite controversial, you know, in certain mm -hmm. aspects, you know. Because she never uh, hide the admiration that she felt for the artist, mm -hmm. and how much, actually, Picasso helped her in that aspect and in that department of their relationship, but there were other departments that she was left behind, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Picasso needed, continuously needs to feed the monster that creates. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it was insatiable sometimes, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. it was like a, a bucket with no ending, you know, you can throw there as much as you can, because he, he was unstoppable as an artist. And uh, and he used, in a way, I mean, that word muse is kind of romantic, you know, my muse and stuff. But, but it's true, he took women and, in a way, um, you know, squeezed them. Mm. And uh, and eventually, when he got bored, he started feeling that the artist was dying. So it's kind of Dracula, it's kind of a vamp vampirism, you know, yeah. uh, uh, with women. Uh, I, I don't even know, I probably not, uh, he probably didn't even know that. He mm. probably was not even conscious, you know, he just did it, you right. know, out of, you know, his own rhythm, uh, vital rhythm. It's uh, very difficult to know if he really actually was conscious. I don't think so. I don't think he, uh, you know, consciously damaged people. I, mm. I don't think so. I think he just uh, thought it was natural, you know. I. Don't love you. I have to just throw you away. I need some something new mm. in order for me to survive and to live and to paint. Mm. Yeah. We had one of your co-stars in uh, Poppy Delavine, and uh, um, she plays Mary Therese. Yes. And she said that she was so excited that she was going to get to do a love scene with Antonio Banderas, <laughs> and then on the day. <laughs> You were wearing a prosthetic nose and a comb over. <laughs> <laughs> it was difficult for both. What was it like <laughs> to film all those love scenes in age makeup? Actually, with her, I didn't have a love scene. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's true that we, at some point, we kiss and stuff. You know, but um, uh, it's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> it's complicated. Um, especially if you have, you know, fake teeth and um, you feel bad kissing somebody <laughs> with that thing in your mouth. It's a very weird thing, very weird experience. Yeah. And, uh, and then she touches me a little bit more than normal, and she may just take my wig off. <laughs> 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 and my nose just goes through <laughs> sideways. <laughs> so it's uh, a strange experience. <laughs> <laughs> but we coped uh, nicely with that, because yeah. she got, one of the things that I love about uh, Poppy is that she got an, uh, an unbelievable sense of humor. She's a very yeah. sweet lady with a great irony. And uh, and I love that about her. You know, I got a fantastic, fantastic, really group of actresses around me playing all the lovers and wives and uh, all of them, all of them. Samantha Coley and you know, of course, uh, Clemence, mm -hmm. Clemence Posse and um, everybody. Yeah. yeah. So it's quite obvious that Picasso is going to live forever in history. Um, but for you personally, how would you like to see his legacy um, in the future? Where, what would you like him to be remembered for? You know, the, the things that I, I f would like uh, for Picasso to be remembered uh, for, basically, is for what he wanted to be remembered from, from his heart, for his art, mm -hmm. for what he did, for the open window that he was for new universes and new ways to understand life. and. Um, in the art world, uh, for them, the real artists who never stop exploring, uh, who never got, uh, uh, you know, to be a painter that uh, got comfortable, 
mm-hmm. with uh, all the skill, the skills that he had. You know, he couldn't stop painting at the age of 16 because at the time he was painting like Velázquez or Vermeer or Rubens. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was an amazing, you know, uh, painter. But then he was bored and he was to the next step, to the next step. At the end of his life, simplicity was uh, his weapon. He painted like his kids. Probably if you put Paloma Claude and him painting in a, in a table and playing, you couldn't distinguish who was the artist, mm-hmm. you know? At the end, it was just a simple stroke, yeah. um, the simplicity of it. It's beautiful. For me, it represents the real, real artist, you know, what uh, you wanted to be and not all of us dare to be. It's mm-hmm. mm-hmm. yeah. lovely. You know, it's been 25 years since Philadelphia, yeah. um, the movie that you uh, starred in with Tom Hanks. Correct. Um, can you tell me a little bit what uh, what that role meant to you? Oh, a lot. Mm-hmm. Just uh, not the role itself, but the movie in, in itself. It was a, it, it, it broke through, you know, many different taboos at that time in Hollywood, you know. Nobody was talking from Hollywood about AIDS, and definitely nobody was talking about uh, homosexuality um, and doing it uh, like the movie does with a tremendous amount of dignity for a community that at that time deserved uh, to be reflected in Hollywood like uh, like they were on the street and you know in a, to a level of normality mm-hmm. of, uh, something that was should be normal for me it was um, not an opening eye because I was coming from an over and I passed through that uh, you know confrontation with an audience of very tough stories with uh, also homosexuals uh, issues and uh, uh, on the screen and it, uh, so it, but I, I, I could feel you know uh, on the set that there was a certain fear uh, but beautiful things happened you know I, I, I remember uh, <laughs> Tom actually Tom Hanks uh, he was always very thankful that I did something one day there was a scene that I was just running to a hospital and I arrived to the hospital the first time that somebody said to me uh, you know your boyfriend has been um, take it to a hospital, he got a crisis one, and so I go there, and we embraced, and so we just embraced, and, and I said to him, aren't you missing something here, Tom? And I said, what is that? I said, I wish you kiss, and we should kiss in mouth, because we are lovers, and we should show that, mm-hmm. normally. And he looked at me, weird, and I said, you are right, let's <laughs> kiss. <laughs> <laughs> And we did it like that, you know, it's something very yeah. simple because it's just a very innocent case. It's nothing. You know, yeah. You're right there, and it's the normal thing, you know. But he was always very thankful to that. He says, Yeah, man, that made me think that, you know, um, that those things should be shown mm. in a normal way. We, the captain of the movie, was a, a great director who passed, um, mm. you know, a couple of uh, years ago. He was. Jonathan uh, and Demi was uh, completely committed with the cause. Mm. And uh, he made us all participate in all the demonstrations that were taking place in Philadelphia at the time. You know, the whole team, the technicians, we were there just holding banners. And it was a beautiful time. It was a beautiful time of uh, breaking through something that it was fair to defend. Mm. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you for that. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, Antonio Banderas, the show is Picasso uh-huh. on Nat Geo, and um, we will see you soon. Thank you. Thank you.